morning and welcome to our service. Our opening hymn this morning, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord? Verses 24 to 30. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. 
Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. Our first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south of the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. And they were going along the road. They came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Second reading is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 21. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. 
The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. John 15, 1, I am the true vine. Often we hear Jesus speaking figuratively and not literally. He often spoke using allegories and images. His words were like painted pictures. He often would tell a story and let people come to their own conclusion. His hidden messages often frustrated his disciples. This morning we hear Jesus say, I am the true vine. 
a figurative message because we know that he was not literally a vine, so we must look beyond the surface to discover the true meaning of this statement. When Jesus spoke about being the good shepherd and others being sheep, it was so those around him would be better able to understand what he meant. As they lived in a society where sheep were often raised and eaten, those listening were better able to understand his message. Today's comments by Jesus about vineyards are no different. The people of Judea knew what he was talking about, as winemaking was an industry that had been carefully cultivated throughout the country for centuries. In one way, the vines which produce grapes for wine are very rugged, yet in another sense, grapes are a very delicate fruit and requires careful handling. A young vine is not permitted to bear fruit for the first three years. They are drastically pruned in December and January to preserve its energy. The particular branches that do not bear fruit are cut off to further conserve the energy of the plant. If this constant cutting back is not done, the result will be a crop that is not up to its full potential. So when Jesus spoke about vineyards, those hearing him clearly identify with the metaphor which he was using. But there's something else which his listeners would have caught hold of. And it's for this reason that each of us should read and learn to understand the scriptures. In Judea, they thought of their nation as a vineyard a kind of national identity. Over and over again in the Old Testament, Israel is pictured as the vine or the vineyard of God. Through the prophet Isaiah, God says, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Through the prophet Jeremiah, God declares, I planted you as a chosen vine. Through the prophet Hosea, God speaks a word of judgment. Israel has become an empty vine. And in the book of Psalms, we read that God compares Israel to a vine that came out of Egypt. The Roman historian Josephus informs us that over the temple in Jerusalem, an exquisite gold leaf grapevine was engraved. It stood as a symbol of national unity. Israel itself was, in the eyes of its people, the true vine whose roots ran all the way back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus is the true vine, and his disciples are the fruit-bearing branches. God cultivates the vineyard. He waters and tends the soil so that the vine is properly nourished. He takes great pride in his crop. However, it also means the vines must be pruned and the dead wood removed. Therefore, what Jesus is saying should be of concern to each of us. If we stop bearing fruit, if we stop being discipled, if we stop being watered and tended to by God's holy word, if we should become unproductive branches which bear no fruit, we may be pruned and cast aside. I am the vine, and you are the branches, says the Lord. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
In our intercessory prayer, we pray for the worldwide Anglican prayer cycle. We pray for the Anglican Church in Japan. And in our diocesan prayer cycle, we pray for the parish of Christ Church Dartmouth, the parish of St. Andrew's Cole Harbor, and the parish of Eastern Passage. In our DCS prayer cycle, we pray for Old St. Jamesworth Hill. We pray for the parish of Milton and Rustico, the King's County Churches, the parish of St. Peter's Cathedral, and the parish of Wolf Island, Ontario. We pray for God's gift of health and healing for Nancy Rackham, Pat Willis, Carol McDonald, Sylvia Moore, and Helen Strelia. We pray for all who have been affected by the COVID-19 virus and for all who are affected by any form of discrimination. And we pray for those who are known to us personally. We pray that God grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, courage to change the things we can, and wisdom to know the difference. Give us thankful hearts and make us ever mindful of the need of others. Amen. Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you this day and remain with you all. Amen.
our closing hymn, My Peace I Give to You. Blessings surround you.